Hello world and welcome to another video. And this one is a really exciting one for me to make today. It's, uh, let's call it an early surprise for everybody that is used to DxO Photo Lab coming out with new versions in sort of mid to late October. This video I'm preparing for release day, which is going to be near the end of September. So, surprise! So just a couple of quick caveats for you. One, I have been working with a pre-release version of Photolab 7 for the last couple of weeks. So there could be some slight changes between what I've been working with and what finally comes out on the day. And the other thing is that I have got Photolab 7 Elite and the newest film pack installed. And I don't at this time actually have clarity over what's going to be in the standard version versus the elite version. So I will add a link in the description to DxO's website where you can see kind of the side-by-side -side comparison of those versions uh, and make a decision for yourself, you know, which one's most appropriate for you. So I'm planning to release a few different videos for Photolab 7. Um, this one, which is kind of an overview, it's me talking through the releases putting them from my perspective in order of how much I love them. Um, and then I'll do a few more specific ones where I show things in a little bit more detail. So you may or may not have seen my video from last year when Photolab 6 released, but if you did look at it, you'll, the title was something along the lines of how I thought that it was the best release they had ever done for Photolab since Photolab started. And I have to say, I think DxO's on fire a bit here because I find myself wanting to say the same thing about Photolab 7, and I swear I am not generally one for hyperbole. Um, but it's, it's as though they've chosen items straight off my personal wish list. M many of the things that have been updated are things that I have long wished for, uh, and I think they will really make an improvement to how I can use the software, and hopefully how other people can use the software too. So is it perfect? No. No software is. Has it addressed everything on my wish list? No, there are still a couple of outstanding items that I might ask for and I might mention through the course of this video. Do I think some people might be a bit grumbly with one change in particular? Yes, probably. There's a pretty major shift to workflow in one area, and anytime you have that major a shift, it's going to cause some pain for some people as they get used to sort of a new way of working. So it won't surprise me if some people are not completely happy, in the beginning at least. I think there are some pretty good benefits to that change that I'm alluding to. So I think it will probably in the long run be seen as overall a good thing. So item number one is related to the fact that they've totally revamped the local adjustment space. And, and I'm not going to go into the total revamp right now because it's one aspect that I'm rating as number one. And that one aspect is the fact that they've added the HSL adjustment into the local adjustment possibilities, which is just absolutely wonderful. That HSL color wheel, you know, it's great. Uh, but there are so many occasions where I wanted to be able to just apply it to one little section. Uh, something that really jumps out to me is uh, there's a great trick that you can do if you need to take some of the red out of people's cheeks or nose or that sort of thing um, that you can use an HSL type adjustment. But it was always limited in the past because if you did it globally, it was super hard not to impact the lips as well. I won't say impossible, but it was a real balancing act. But now you can quite literally just, just select the bits of the uh, photo that you're interested in changing and you can go ahead and make that change, which is absolutely wonderful. And I will do another video uh, more specifically on using the HSL tool in the local adjustments. So my number two comes in the color rendering space. And just like with local adjustments where they've actually made quite a few changes, and I, I started out just, just mentioning one in particular, they've done quite a few changes in the color rendering space. Uh, some really great improvements. But my number two is actually got to do with the generic renderings that they have. 
you know, in the past, if you were in the generic space, you had DXL camera profile and neutral color. Um, and yes, if you were in the legacy color space, there were even a few more. Um, I just didn't tend to use that for the last year. Um, but now, the thing that, that I'm placing on my number two is they've, they've added some. They've got natural, vibrant, vivid, and they've got three different variations of portrait renderings, which have slight shifts to colors and, and even slight shifts to tonality between them, which are, are really, really fantastic. And I mean, basically, these give us a great starting point. They can cut down on other editing that we need to do if we can start closer to where we want to be. So absolutely fantastic. Now, also worth a mention while I'm talking about the um, section on color renderings is they've really simplified the way that you can uh, convert to or work in black and white in that space as well. And in addition to that, they've also added some rendering, selection of renderings for black and white as well in there. So absolutely wonderful. And I think it'll save a lot of time. So my number three is jumping back to the local adjustment space. And now what I'd like to talk about is the fact that they've completely redesigned how we interact with local adjustments. In that in the past, you'd, you'd drop a point or a line or whatever it is you would do, and you'd get the adjustments right on top of the image. And what they've done is kind of a simplification, which personally I love. Now, this is the bit that I said I worry some people will grumble about this in the short term just because it's such a departure from how it used to be done. And again, change usually, you know, it, it, it comes with some discomfort. So I won't be surprised if it's not super popular to start, but I think it will be popular in the long run. And I think that because it keeps things much more organized, it keeps the image itself less cluttered, um, and, and it makes it much easier to do accurate, finely detailed adjustments on, on what you're working with because you can get at the sliders or the numeric entry uh, in a much more detailed fashion. So I think it's, it's absolutely great. So their press release um, uses this kind of language. It says this evolution keeps the interface cleaner and makes photos more visible while they're being worked on allowing even greater precision from our popular U-Point tool. Uh, and honestly, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think it's an absolutely uh, fantastic change. Now, that said, there are a couple of workflow items that... They're basically, a couple of the, the things from my video that I mentioned earlier about uh, some, some, some things to watch out for in terms of workflow changes uh, come from interacting with this new local space. So I think maybe a, a couple of flow items to be ironed out a little bit, in my opinion, um, but overall really, really positive. So that's fantastic. I will also mention, because it's always worth mentioning, just in case anybody's watching this video, one of the items on my wish list that I alluded to earlier um, that I think is now possible given this shift to how local adjustments are set up, so I'm super excited for that, is to get a tone curve put in the local adjustment space as well. And yes, I know we have the selective tone tools in there, which kind of do a similar thing, but they're also kind of mapped differently. My wish list is that I would like to have a tone curve in there, so I'm gonna just pop that one out there um, and, and see what happens. At least, at least it's a, a possibility at this stage. So my item number four is actually possibly a little bit of a cheat in that it doesn't actually come in Photolab in and of itself, even if you've got Elite, because this newest bit is actually tied into Film Pack. Given that I have both of these, I'm super excited about the fact that it now has luminosity masking, just straight up luminosity masking. There's some um, sort of zone-based selections that you can do straight out the gate, uh, but then also you can get in and fine tune and adjust that. So uh, I absolutely love that. It really, in my mind, complements the the U point technology that's elsewhere, and I think just really rounds out the rounds out the selections. So my number five is a really really powerful feature, and probably not one that I'm going to use every day, 
but when I want it, I'll be so happy it's there because it will really smooth out the workflow. And that is the ability to do color calibrations. Now I can actually write in the software, identify my color chart, and there are a number of different color charts that it'll sort of recognize and accept. And, um, and then just create the profile right in there. So you can get super, super accurate colors. I think, you know, if I'm doing photography where the, maybe it's of a product or something and you, you want to get those brand colors exactly correct, uh, it's absolutely invaluable. Or perhaps maybe you're taking some portraits of somebody and they've got a very distinctive piece of clothing um, and that, that clothing, for example, is coming out not the right color exactly. So you can, you can incorporate that sort of... Um, extra precision of, of color reproduction and do it straight in the software, which is, which is really awesome. So number six is the ability to quickly and easily apply LUTs right in the software. And there are a selection of built-in LUTs or you can load in others if you've, if you've built or purchased LUTs from elsewhere, you can add them in and, and apply them. So that's it for me. I, I want to keep this reasonably short, so I will not bang on and on about this and that. I'd like to just say a quick uh, well done to DxO. I think you've done a fantastic update. Thank you for your time and energy that you've put into making this a really, really positive update. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments, get a sense for what you're thinking about this update. What's your favorite new feature? Is there something on your wish list that you'd like to see come out in the, the next version? You know, just overall, what, what are your impressions of this? If you're thinking about doing a trial or upgrading or purchasing, I'm going to drop some affiliate links down in the description below. Please do feel free to use those. They cost you nothing if you do happen to use them, but they can certainly help out the channel, and I promise I will not complain. <laughs> so with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.